Okay, so we're both working on our computers as we do. We were watching H3 Live and they just were so happy to talk about me. We clicked it on for when we were eating the, the grilled cheese, which only takes like four minutes to eat. So you have to like find something that's not a movie for that because it's not dinner. So we turned the H3 Live thing on and they were talking about me, which I was so excited about because I was like, oh my gosh, in front of me. So technically us as a whole. And there was a guy that was like critiquing it. I don't even know his name, but basically saying like, I got the gist of it being like, oh, well, like he shouldn't work with Trish because she has borderline, which I'm like, so that's why I text them. I'm like, this is so weird. Like, I'm not a murderer. I shouldn't be locked in prison. Like, because you have a mental illness. Even schizophrenia people. Like, they, they can, like, survive and function in the real world. Like, you can be on stuff. Anyways, so I looked up because, like, here's the thing. Yes, I have been, I guess, diagnosed. I don't know. Therapists have told me to go to DPT classes. Say I have traits of BPT. I've never really been like, this is you. But I pretty much think it's me. Um, Because, like I said, therapists have told me that I have traits of it. And they sent me to DPT classes, which is with borderline so anyways i'm in a relationship i'm actually engaged to this guy so i looked up symptoms now he's not a therapist are you oh hey money nope. just all casually on his bank just <laughs> flexing <laughs> <laughs> um and so i watched a girl named brat mitzvah on tiktok who was really cool during my little mm, like i had a little manic episode and she was really cool about it and she's talking about how her partner deals with her bpd symptoms so i was here with mine who's not a therapist but my boyfriend who decided to marry me and see how he deals with these issues you ready yes i feel like you deal with them very well i feel like maybe you're very patient i think you're trying to be a very very patient person um did you ever know anybody who had borderline? Did you ever date anybody that had borderline personality disorder? No, definitely not. <laughs> oh my god, that was a hard. That was a hard. Definitely not. Oh my god, yeah. Okay. All right. So these are the signs and symptoms, and tell me if you think I, these apply to me, and then tell me if you how you deal with them. An intense fear of abandonment, even going to extreme measures to avoid real or imagined separate separation or rejection. You definitely have that. How do you deal with it? How do we solve it? I feel like we solved it. Well, I mean, once I yeah. once we started living together, that was not an issue anymore. Yeah, that's true. Because before, when I would leave, you wouldn't know when I come back. Um, so just let move in with the person and <laughs> it'll fix everything. Fix a I lot. I think, I mean, if it wasn't that, it's more living in a way, in a positive, in oh. a way that makes the other side know that you're coming back, not leaving them hanging, not knowing. Yeah, that's so. So true. let's say if we had a fight, <gasps> not leaving. You know, after the fight, rather talking about it, saying, you know, I'll be back. Everything's fine. I'm just gonna work or whatever, and I'll be back. Or you let me go with you when I really didn't believe you'd come back. Remember that one big fight we had with the keys? Well, I'd be happy if you come with me, but. <laughs> and you're like, okay, you can come with me, but I have to go back to my house, and I did, and you stayed. Yeah. Mm hmm. So again, it's communication. It's reassuring the person. Okay. A pattern of unstable, intense relationships, such as idealizing someone one moment and then suddenly believing the person doesn't care enough or is cruel. Unstable, intense relationships. Yes. I definitely, <laughs> you're just you know, like, check all these. You know, go from like, <laughs> I love you, you're amazing, to you're the scum of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how do we deal with that? Well, I don't care. Like, <laughs> it doesn't make me feel bad if you say that because I know you don't mean it. Right. Mm. So it's being confident enough and not taking it personally. I think that might be my hardest thing to control. I mean, that's just like with friendships, relationships, work things. I get really... <sighs> yeah, that one's hard to control. I don't know. I don't even know if there is But again, if you're with somebody that's insecure, that's not going to work. Rapid changes in self-identity and self-image that include shifting goals and values and seeing yourself as bad or as if you don't exist at all. Well, we know you change every day. <laughs> but I don't think that's a bad thing. Rapid changes right. in identity? No, I'm saying in a good way. You know, just look at our photos together. Like every day, <laughs> it's a different character or a different person. That's but that me... part is fun. <laughs> yeah, that's more just like... I mean, I don't know the psychology behind it. People always say that's like dealing with trauma. But I don't know. To me, it's just fun. But also you do move. But I see that more as a, you know, because I told you, you're pretty much a, geni a genius when it comes to work and entertainment. So it's like following the 
the trend, but it's more than just a trend. You create the trend, but it's like <laughs> if you decide like now I'm doing TikTok, now I'm doing YouTube, now I'm doing this, now I'm, like it's getting like feeling it, but it's into intuition. Do you ever get scared of my changing personalities? Like we're changing identity. No, I trust you. You think it's like normal? Like you don't think it's weird? No, I think it'd be boring otherwise. Do you or... think? Do you look at it as kind of like just I'm dressing up? No, I see. Like I, I like acting when you actually channel a character, right? So you get right. to actually be that character for that day. It's so weird. It'd be weird to not try and be like something. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. Like even our house, like everything I do is like inspired by like pop culture. I don't know what that is. It's kind of like the cable guy. It is, you but it is. Cause I, I grew up the same way, like watching TV and like you do, it's like, okay, in a different period of time, it would be mythology. So people made their houses look like a Roman palace, like the White House, like a Greek palace. Right. Right. So people had mythology. They had the Bible. They had the, the New Testament. So they would embody that into their design of the homes, the artwork, the characters. For yeah. us, television is that, is the mythology. Right. Like so you have the characters that you like from that mythology, right? Yeah. And you reenact their characters, their clothing, their style. How come that girl that's Marilyn Monroe on TikTok, like, not to send her any hate because she's really sensitive about that, but, like, how come <laughs> she doesn't get more hate because she's literally living her life in that person's house? Like, she's dressed as Marilyn, she's living in Marilyn's house. Like, how come she doesn't get hate for, like, literally just being, taking someone's identity completely? And I like her. I'm not saying any hate to her, but how come she, how come people are like so forgiving with her? She obviously has some sort of identity issue and crisis. But I think so far she only did one. Like but extreme. She, no, but she hasn't, if she says one thing that's wrong, they'll eat her alive. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's not because of that. It's other things that trigger people and then they come for everything. But I think, yeah. With her, it's it just it's just a matter of time. To me, that's even, like, there is something more wrong with that person. Like, she's clearly, like, trauma. And she has, like, she's trying to cover it up by being Marilyn and living in Marilyn's house and talking like her. And she, like, oh, just the other day she did a TikTok where someone asked her, you know how she does those things, like, turn into a carrot or whatever. Broccoli. Yeah, broccoli. <laughs> and someone's like, oh, can you do one where you take off all your makeup? And she said, no, she, like, wasn't comfortable doing that. And I'm like, mm. okay, there are some deep issues with this girl and everyone's just ignoring it. But for her, it might be just a hustle. Like it just, she figured out the way I can make money. I'm gonna, you know, so. live in her house, dresses her, do something. And she got a lot of followers, so she's making money out of that. I just sounded like Gabby Hanna when I just screamed like that. That really was triggering. I was like, oh my God, I sound like Gabby. Ah! She screams everything to everybody. What is wrong? Why can't people do that? Like it's, so, oh my God, I need to stop watching her. I'm becoming a monster. Oh my God. That's the name of her song, actually. Do you know the song Monster by Gabby Hanna? I don't know any of her songs. What if I'm the monster? Oh my God. This video was doing so well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Symptoms. Uh, <laughs> symptoms. Okay. Periods of stress-related paranoia and loss of contact with reality lasting from a few minutes to a few hours. Yeah, definitely paranoia. Mm, that's interesting. I do get, I am paranoid all the time. Yeah. And same thing, it's just a matter of trust. And I think that one, the best thing is just to wait until it goes away. Because when somebody is paranoid, anything you're going to say, it's going to feed their paranoia. Mm. Nothing will ever be outside of it, you know. So in, in paranoia, you just have to step away. No, but you're here. I think like it's like I think like you being here makes it better. No, but I'm Without... talking about let's say because we didn't have any of those situations. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. That was visa, which I don't have a visa. Okay, paranoia. What? So since we live together, you didn't really have that type of paranoia. Since living together, mm -hmm. no. But about other things, I feel like I'm paranoid about other people and things sometimes. Right, but that's that's a complex because it's a combination of things. One is being a public figure, mm. so there's a paranoias that come out of that. You do have paranoias that are probably. I mean, when you were young and nobody's caring for your safety, yeah. So you have to develop a very high sense of you know um, 
So you have to be a little bit paranoid all the time. Because you never know if people are on your side or not, what they want from you. Yeah, I feel like, okay, back to the relationship. I feel like, yeah, the paranoia with you has gone down, I think, right? Mm-hmm. I think, think so. You mainly make jokes. It's not real. What's my paranoia jokes that I make? If I give you a drink, you're like, are you trying to poison me? Oh, but there's some truth to that. Sometimes I think <laughs> you are. Honestly, I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. I wonder, I was making you something the other day. Oh, just today. I wanted, it was like when I told you to like not come in the kitchen and make me nervous. I'm like, I wonder if he thinks I'm poisoning him in here. I was like, <laughs> well, maybe, I then I was like, oh, maybe you should come back. <laughs> so it's like, that kind of sounds like I'm trying to poison you. So from now on, you're going to take a bite from everything you make me first. I did that, remember? I'm like, taste. but you can have some of mine too. I I had you choose which grilled oh, cheese you wanted. you tried to trick me. No, I put the grilled cheese on. I said, pick which one you want. And then he even took a bite of his. And I took a bite of mine. I said, do you want to switch and like have mine too? Just so you don't think I'm trying to poison you. That's really the truth. Do you remember the Princess of Princess Bride or something like that? I never saw that movie. Oh. It's an old movie, right? In yeah. the 80s? I don't know what. Because he had one drink with a... It's a great scene. He has one drink with poison and the other one. And he keeps trying to confuse him which one had the poison. That movie never looked good to me. A lot of people love The Princess Bride. We should I watch it. can't wait till my hair gets longer. I'm down. Once my hair gets longer, it's going to be so full. And right now, it just kind of sticks straight up. <laughs> it's getting so much thicker, though. Okay. Anyways. Impulsive and risky behavior such as gambling, reckless driving, unsafe sex, spending sprees, binge eating. I didn't know binge eating was hand in hand with borderline. Reaches. That makes sense. Uh, drug abuse, sabotaging success by suddenly quitting a good job or ending a positive relationship. My Gabby Hammer voice again. Um, oh my God, yeah. I mean, not gambling, thank God. Reckless driving, hell no, I'm very safe. Um, let's see, but good. everything else is spending sprees. Oh my god, I totally <laughs> skipped over spending sprees. That's that's yes. crazy. Are you reading that? This is from MayoClinic.org. This is yeah, but I think it's also depends on the, your, the influence next to you, right? Because like I'm not doing drugs, but if I was, mm -hmm. you could easily get into that and abuse it. Oh, um, but I hate doing I drugs. No, but I'm just saying. Like, yeah, I yeah. am. So the things that I don't compliment you with, they don't. They're not there so much. I don't compliment me with spending sprees and i still do that right but but i'm saying no i'm saying drugs will come from me but then you would abuse it too right. or uh, the other things you don't do binge eating i definitely did that's so weird spending sprees binge eating i mean honestly that was obviously it doesn't matter anymore we're in a relationship but um sabotaging success by suddenly quitting a job or ending a positive relationship this is crazy how did i go undiagnosed for song is this a real disorder or was it just made for me i feel like literally people made this disorder after like studying me for so many years this is crazy. Oh, yeah. I don't, because when I was a kid, they diagnosed me bipolar, like wrongfully and gave me bipolar medication. And I really think it was this, but I don't think this was around back then. I think this is like a new, seriously, like a new disorder because this is crazy. And I feel well, like I this mean, is... since we were kids, definitely it has developed more the, mm. the way they diagnose things. Think about autism, for example. It used yeah. to be one thing and now there's a full range. Which one are you? I'm probably in the artistic autistic. <laughs> is there autistic autistic? Oh my god, but that is you. It's you, closer. You think you're on the spectrum. It's closer to the, um, what is the name of it? Asperger's, but yeah. not as extreme. It's more. You're a little Asperger y. Um, suicidal threats or behavior or self injury, often a response of fear of separation or rejection. Yes. I've <laughs> definitely seen that. Oh my god, I remember. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I don't even want to go in the beginning of our relationship. That was just crazy and scary. And I think the alarms were on. I don't know. There were so many weird things. Okay. Skipping <laughs> over that, but yes. Oh, oh, well, I guess we should say how you deal with it. How did you deal with it? Well, it didn't just, really work. No, because I mean, the, I knew the threat wasn't real, so I just didn't feed into it, you know. Because if I would budge, he would gain, you know, power and movement from it. And I just didn't acknowledge it so it had to go away mm, but it didn't go away because it came over to your house no <laughs> i'm saying the threats of the threat of killing yourself yeah true let's say i, I called the bluff maybe that's not always the best advice though if someone is suicidal no this is a different situation though this is threat when you know of not but i actually did try and kill myself three times that's why i ended up in a mental institution i mean i don't think it was me but they definitely declared it enough to 5150 me and I didn't even have a choice. And I even said, like, I don't want to kill myself. And they're like, mm, nope, you still got to go. Because they deemed it as trying to kill myself. So. 
maybe not always a threat. Although I definitely don't want to kill myself. And if I die from that, it's not me. Somebody did it. I was don't. It I'm too scared. I'm literally too scared. That's why it always shocks me that I was 51 15. Because I'm too scared to actually do it. And I say that to everybody just so they know. Wide mood swings lasting from a few hours to a few days, which can include intense happiness, irritability, shame, or anxiety. Yes. They've been lessened. My mood swings have been lessened, I feel. Mm -hmm. Especially irritability. You're the best at mood swing handling. Yes and no. You're, like, really good at it, but then sometimes you're not. Okay. What do you do? I feel like, what do you do? First of all, I don't get stressed. Mood swings. You know. I don't take it personally. Yeah. I'm not afraid of the mood swings. Like, it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to be anxious. And they don't judge you for it. So, because I think when you, let's say if you have a mood swing, your fear will be my reaction to it. Yeah. So I don't, you know, like I don't. That's true. It doesn't change my feelings about I feel bad you. after because I always feel like I'm like really like moody and then I feel really bad. And you're like, it's fine. Let yeah, it. because if you, if you feel bad for feeling bad, then it's an endless cycle. So, yeah. So we just acknowledge it. It's okay to be sad sometimes. It's okay to feel bad. It's okay to be irritable. And then it goes away and things go back to normal. But if you feel bad after it, then we keep feeling bad. You'll either try and come and comfort me or if I'm like, give me space, then you give me space. And then I'm usually over it pretty quickly. Like we've been yeah. over it quickly. Ongoing feelings of emptiness. You think I have I think you, what you have more is you... You're usually very busy, so your day is full. Yeah. Making music videos, making projects. So usually you you make sure your life is full. And then when it drops and suddenly, because we'll, we'll be so busy. And you're I like, know. I just want a minute to be home, quiet, alone. But then when we're home, quiet, alone. I hate it's it. It's like, oh, my God. The world is ending. Nothing is oh, happening. It's I so boring. I always want to do something. So. I think that I'm like, I need to be on a TV show. I need to do a movie with Adam Sandler. I need to be on Broadway. Like, I just want to do so many things. And that's why I do so many music videos because it gives me a sense of purpose. Otherwise, I feel very, like, the wedding now, at least, is, like, giving me a sense of purpose and decorating. And stuff. So now, but, like, but then once we're settled and I'm worried after we're settled into the house after, like, all our weddings and stuff. And then I'm like, now what? That's when you're like, okay, well, now I want you, a baby. I was just going to say, if you have a baby, that will supply you <laughs> of 18 years of... <laughs> That's true. There's lots of birthdays to plan. Um, yeah, sometimes I feel empty, but... Inappropriate, intense anger, such as frequently losing your temper, being sarcastic or bitter, or having physical fights. Definitely not me. <laughs> what? Definitely does not apply to me, that one, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, that one's hard for me. That's my hardest one is my temper. I don't know what it is. That's the trigger where I'm talking about where, like, is not me. That's something where I feel like it's, like, definitely not me. It's, like, so scary. So those, I don't know how we control those. No one's ever been able to really help me. Even, like, the DBT, like, I can recognize anxiety. I can, I can actually... When I'm starting to get angry, I've learned this with just people and you and everybody... I asked people to like drop it and stop talking about it, which he always thought was like me trying to control the situation. When in reality, I just know I'm gonna like lose my shit if we don't stop talking about it. So I feel like that, a part time, being separate, either I sleep it off, which always, 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 once I sleep on something, when I did those exposed videos on people, like the next day, I in, always regretted it. So it's like if I could just sleep, I would feel like I know I would like chill. Um, so. Yeah, I think the best thing to do is take a nap for real or just stop talking about the situation and stop looking at the person. Walking away from it. Yeah, a walk away for sure helps a lot. Because you do get it under control. Like, uh, tempers obviously don't last very long unless you get provoked. And then you lose your shit and then it becomes words you can't take back or actions you can't undo. Um... Oh, stressful. So they come from many people with the disorder report being sexually or physically abused or neglected during childhood. Some people have lost or separated from parent or close giver when they were young. Others have been exposed to hostile conflict and unstable family relationships. Well, that's just me all around. Um, you may be at higher risk of a close relative. Your mother, father has the same similar disorder, which I don't think anyone in my family does. Like my family is like, 
My dad had a temper, but I don't think he was any of these other things. I think he just had anger problems, but. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, oh my God, we can also have depression, anxiety disorders, eating disorders, bipolar disorder, post-traumatic stress. Yeah, there's like a ton. Anyways, that was, I thought that was interesting. Why did I look this up? Oh, because we were talking about it on the H3 Live. You can totally live with someone with BPT. Like, we shouldn't be locked away. I hate that. That's what I hate about that message. No. It's like, it's fine to critique me. And, like, obviously, like, everyone says it's, like, not an excuse. But to be like, why do you have a podcast with her that's exploiting? When I've always said I want to do it, I like doing it. Like, I'm fine. I, like, I'm not a, I'm not a psychopath that, like, murdered everybody. Like, I'm a. Yeah, but he's saying, basically, that nobody should work with you. And you're like, wait, is that how you helping a person? I know. <laughs> say that nobody should work with you. Nothing. <laughs> Which is the opposite of what the message should be. Dr. Drew said that too. And I was like, oh, I shouldn't even be in a relationship. And he's like, that is your self -set. That's your BPD talking. Mm -hmm. That you are. You do deserve to be in a relationship. It's just finding the right person who will do with it. And you're very, very patient. I think the main thing is if you have borderline personality disorder and you have intense anger, temper tantrums, etc. Find someone who's really patient because otherwise you'll be screwed. And secure. <laughs> insecure because i think insecurity would be the thing that will yeah no not you, work. you're the most secure person i've ever met like it's actually insane how secure you are which is good i mean even before we like started dating you were very just <laughs> nothing bothered you um let's do something fun let's show should we show off the new sunglasses yeah go for it baby he loves this one <laughs> even though he didn't like it at first when i showed him the pictures well the thing is it looks ridiculous for anyone else wearing it but when you wear it yourself it's so much fun it's so much fun. Check yeah, because it's too. like sunglasses without a frame. You just look through it. I don't know. I like this thing. <laughs> I feel like I should play tennis now. Tennis? Maybe just the band on the hair. Babe, we kind of look cool. Well. Well. Babe, can you sing one follow-up boy song? <laughs> you always put me on the spot. You know. Give yes, me, could... give me the, um, oh, did, am I more <laughs> than you bargained for? Yeah, can you sing it? Am I more than you bargained for? Something. Yeah. <laughs> he sang that one day and I was like, how did you know that? And he's like, TikTok. I was like, mm. and you knew it was follow up, boy. Babe, you're getting so much better. It's like when you're teaching me Hebrew and you piece things together and I'm so no, proud of you. music I catch on, especially tunes. And I have musical hearing, but nothing more than that. That was so good. I'm always so proud when you know. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I got this on eBay and it makes me really happy because I remember these hoodies in middle school. All right, guys, we are going to go oh, look yeah. at things. We have, to, we have to go now. This is so good. This is my favorite thing. Where's your Capri Sun? We were drinking Capri Suns earlier. I felt so cool in the stall. Finished that. Now I'm having my tea. You're going to have to go to the bathroom. Anyways, this was our vlog of the day. Yeah. But you can't drink with us. We'll have fun vlogs coming soon. We're going to have moving vlogs and everything. So fun vlogs will be coming. It'll be more than just us sitting here um, looking up symptoms of my <laughs> mental disorder. But, um, yeah, maybe next time we'll look up symptoms of your autism. Sure, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs>